Hello everyone, today we will talk about integration with Elasticsearch and use cases for that. So let's imagine that you have the following situation. So when we have a Salesforce instance and we have some kind of external sites and those sites should be able to grab information from Salesforce. So to do so, if you would like to get a real-time information, we could uh, make a request directly from external websites to Salesforce and grab that information and show it on the external website. But the problem with it is in the following, that each site could potentially produce very big amount of API calls to Salesforce and all these API calls will be counted against um, daily limits related to Salesforce instance. And in that case, we could be out of the limit and some of our requests could actually not, not get um, appropriate data. So in that case, what is possible for us to do? Uh, it's to use <coughs> some kind of middleware. And in that middleware, we will be able to make a callout from external system. So this external system will make whatever number of callouts what they want to make to that uh, middleware. And in that case, everything what we will need to do is we will need to make sure that we are synchronizing data from Salesforce to this, um, let's say, platform. So it could be, let's say, um, some Heroku database or some another, let's say, um, storage, right, where we could store our records. And in that case, what we will need to make sure is that the actual indexing that we have here on the platform is working fast. Because if on your sites you will need to have some kind of... Uh, logic which is not just querying the all of the data but querying it based on the, some conditions some parameters and things like this you will need to make sure that the actual result will be returned fast from elastics so from this third party system and in that case uh, in the current world we already have uh, some um, some let's say systems that we could use for for that purpose it uh, have a name elastic search and what is allowing us to do it's allowing us to actually store data uh, for example, from Salesforce uh, in it, so it will index it, so that means that all of the data that will be present here will be available for very quick search, So and it will support different kind of filters um, for that logic. So when, for example, site 1, site 2, site 3 will request any kind of logic from that elastic uh, search, so the actual data and the actual API call to that platform will be very, very fast. Let's say the actual search and logic will work really really quickly um, so let's imagine then that we have not only one object but a couple of objects that we would like to synchronize into that platform and we would like to not use Salesforce platform limits for incoming calls so in that case what we are doing is we are implementing batch plus scheduler and uh, what that logic will do so for example if we have different kind of object uh, we could implement it in the following manner so we could have a flow which will take a look into the modification of one of those objects or, you know, like on each object separate flow and it will check, okay, so if object number one is changed, so now I'm marking the field require a synchronization equal to true. Or, for example, it could be daytime field, so for you to be able to understand when it was marked, let, let's say, as ready to be promoted to that specific, uh, let's say, kind of environment, and uh, when the, it will be actually promoted, so then the separate field will check that period. And in that case, you will be able to report on what is a delta. Uh, and it will allow you to analyze where, where you are with that specific approach. So the similar uh, approach needs to be implemented for object 2 and object 3. And that means that if changes will be done on one of the key fields which are need to be exposed to the elastic search so in that case um, Salesforce uh, batch will grab those records where the checkbox equal to true like for example synchronization required or when the date field with date requested for synchronization will be specified so then uh, our scheduler will which work for example every half of hour or often more often will just grab the data and will promote it to Elasticsearch. So in that case, uh, there are, will be two teams who will work on it. So first team is Salesforce team. So for the Salesforce team, what is required is to actually build this integration between Salesforce and Elasticsearch. And second point, which is possible, uh, so sorry, second team who is, will work on it, it will be specific side teams for them to make sure that they um, invoke in the same, let's say, API. 
So in that case, uh, what we could do next uh, is we could take a look how we could actually build that bridge between Salesforce and Elastic. Uh, but prior to that, what I would like to mention is that uh, with Elastic, what is possible for us is to have, uh, let's say, kind of staging for Elastic. And in that case, we will be able to divide um, to our uh, instances. Like, for example, when we are working just for on dev environment, on QA or on UAT, we would like to actually test it with uh, staging elastic environment and then use it for the staging side when we you know like tested it and when our entire synchronization is working perfectly and so then we could promote our changes related to Salesforce to prod and uh, we could create related content source on the elastic for um, logic that we just did on elastic so if we will just jump to the Elastic documentation, we will be able to see that there are already some connector which is available in the market, let's say. Um, but the problem with it is that, as you could see, it supports um, just a couple of objects, so it's standard object. And in terms of the standard object, it supports just some fields, right? And uh, in the document, you will be able to actually find how we need to configure it. As always, we need to create um, how it's called connected apps. So from these connected apps, we will need to um, configure, configure um, let's say, integration bridge with Elastic. So once we will get this client ID and client secret, we will need to use it for um, synchronization, right? But as I mentioned, the biggest problem here is that not all objects are actually supported and there are also kind of feedbacks from different kind of guys that it's not not fully working so that's why well, what is possible to do right it's as i mentioned it's to use this uh, batch plus scheduler and this batch plus scheduler will actually bring all necessary records to to elastic so once you just uh doing so let's say you specified batch so i will not show you let's say that code because it's it's pretty trivial right well, what is do is just make an http call out um, to the necessary endpoint and that endpoint you could store in Salesforce for example in custom setting or in the custom metadata uh, so then on the actual elastic search what you will need to do is you will need to create um, the actual source so when you're creating the actual source what is possible for you to do here it's you are right after creation getting the source identifier so that means that each time when you synchronize and separate object into the elastic search, it should have some kind of container for it. So in that case, it will be exactly that source ID, content source. So that means that that object one will be stored there in one content source, object two in separate object and so on and so forth. Unless if you would like to combine them together. Like for example, you could have a generic content source on the elastic, which will have name like an events. And from Salesforce, you could post here, for example, events or, for example, emails or incidents or cases, right? All of this kind of stuff could be recognized as an event if they have, let's say, similar fields, which could be mapped against uh, the same schema. So then what is happening here, it's uh, when you will run your um, batch, so it will actually synchronize those records here into the Elastic, but prior to it, what you need to make sure is that you actually specify the schema for that specific um, source. And the way how you, we are doing so, it's we are just actually creating the fields here. And those fields, it's actually something that you need to put into your payload. So that means that if, for example, here we have great name, a state name, so that means that your Elastic um, search will expect that this data, which is coming from Salesforce, will have exactly the same fields in the payload. And once it will be provided, it will map those fields against these content source fields that we are having here. And um, in terms of the basic of integration, that's all. So you could see this is just another pattern that we could use for us to be able to expose data from Salesforce to external system. Uh, and it's, I think, like a prolongation of that speech that I had in another video uh, related to such kind of similar type of integration. So at this moment that's all from my side. If you guys using it on the project you could just make a comment under that video and explain what is the difference in your integration. And at this moment that's it from my side and cheers. cheers.